Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And here I have a great article for you guys from Mike over at Light Reading. I'll leave a link to it in the description so you guys could check it out. So this one is, in my opinion, a unnecessary back and forth. Um, I don't think this is going to go anywhere. And I think eventually it will have to be brought up in front of the FCC or, or some type of federal court. So T-Mobile... WCO fight fight gets muddy. So the the main topic between the two is the 2.5 spectrum. So there are some school districts and some education boards that that own they technically outright own the 2.5 spectrum that T-Mobile today leases from from these uh, school districts and these education boards. So WCO Spectrum finally issued its response to T-Mobile's recent lawsuit against the company alleging that T-Mobile is engaging in a campaign of threats, intimidation, and most effectively litigation against schools and other edu educational institutions. The company also published some of the documents related to T-Mobile's hardball negotiation tactics with the school. However, there, has been, there, there have also been some interesting developments outside the California courtroom hearing the legal battle between T-Mobile and WCO. First, T-Mobile appears to have successfully reached an agreement with the Christian College of Georgia to purchase the college's 2.5 spectrum license. That's noteworthy, considering the college last year sat at the center of a multi-million dollar bidding war between T-Mobile and WCO. So that's, that's one. That's one positive. Second, WCO does not appear to have gone through with its own plan to purchase a 2.5 gigahertz spectrum license from the Owasso public school district it had intended to that's noteworthy considering wco has in the past argued that its pursuit of 2.5 spectrum is genuine and that it had financial firepower to complete such purchases we all know 2.5 is very expensive or any spectrum for that matter is, is very expensive so you really have to have that type of money to really buy that spectrum and if you don't have that type of money you gotta you, you just gotta you know you just gotta stay home so in this case, this is a back and forth. This is a uh, cat and dog fight. I think T-Mobile ultimately wins this in, in, in an FCC setting. This is spectrum that even these educational boards are not using. It's unused spectrum sitting there. And then for the purpose of T-Mobile leasing that spectrum back from the educational institutions, when it's time to renegotiate the, the, the leasing, and T-Mobile at that time does not own the spectrum, the educational institutions know that this spectrum is very valuable to T-Mobile and they are going to upcharge them. They're going to upcharge them tremendously and make them pay way more over a long term of a of a leasing agreement than it, than it would you know than it would cost T-Mobile just to outright outright own that spectrum. So this is interesting T-Mobile will have many more of these types of negotiations. There's a lot of leasing um, that Sprint did. So what Sprint did, just to give you guys a backstory, a lot of the spectrum was owned by Sprint, from what I was told. But the fact that team, uh, that Sprint at the time had had financial troubles, and they just couldn't, you know, they were operating at a net loss. They couldn't fund the network the way they wanted it to. So they started leasing. They started, you know, selling the spectrum. And then leasing it back from a, from a lot of these uh, educational institutions. There are some uh, there are some churches, so that's how kind of, and I think even Clearwire during those days as well. They they did something very similar, so it's just very interesting to see that T-Mobile has to deal with this. But before merger, before the merger was agreed upon, before it actually went through pre-merger, T-Mobile had to have known. That this was the case with that 2.5 spectrum. There's no way that they go through such a huge transaction and a merger and not know that a lot of this 2.5 spectrum is in limbo. And that they would potentially have to pay additional money throughout the years to gain access to outright ownership for the spectrum. This could cost T-Mobile plenty more billions of dollars beyond what they actually paid for Sprint. Right? They paid $26 billion for Sprint. But now having to deal with these companies and then, you know, they have to bid. In some cases, they have to bid against these uh, educational institutions. It's going to cost T-Mobile millions, if not billions more dollars to really have access to all of that spectrum. 
And then there are still some of these other companies that that have ownership to some of the fragmentation issues that T-Mobile has. Like, for example, here it's Sonic Wave. In some areas, it's other companies that T-Mobile may have to work through if they choose to, to gain full contiguous blocks of 2.5. So still lots of issues with 2.5 out there. This is going to be very expensive for T-Mobile to move forward. Such a mess, but it's what they signed up for, so they got to deal with it. So make sure you guys stay tuned for more. Like, share, subscribe, follow my social media outlets. This is Tyrone with Tech Life, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.